There's a lot of really cool videos out there that are so useful for worship. And, uh, I was just delighted to find uh, this one. Um, it's called Thanksgiving Chair. What did you see? says he saw himself. What kind of guy is this? You think maybe his wife has one? his demeanor. Sad. Sad. Oh, what was his future? It seemed like he had a smile on his face a lot. Yeah. I mean, he found, uh, he was finding lots of stuff to be thankful for. And then the last scene was putting a daughter to bed. And then what did he do? Okay. He, he's passing it on. Scripture today uh, from Thessalonians. See that none of you repay evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the word of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and your, may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. One of the many benefits of, of being in ministry is that uh, you're supposed to send, spend part of your time uh, studying and reading and uh, thinking and, and all. And uh, I, I do enjoy that. Um, I have a chance to browse through articles and sometimes it's getting ready for a program, but sometimes it's just trying to, you know, increase my uh, spirituality. Uh, I ran across uh, a little blog that was written in 2010 by a woman named Julie Clawson. And it is amazingly informative to me. If you don't mind, I'll just read it. I was born missing my left arm below the elbow. This technically means I have a disability, though I find it hard to identify with the label. Missing my arm is simply what I know, part of my basic everyday existence. I know the limits of my ability, but I see no need to define myself by them. Similarly, I don't mind being asked about my arm, just as I don't mind being asked about a new haircut. I feel no need to be ashamed or apologetic for my 
physical form. It's always a bit jarring when I encounter people who think that I should feel ashamed about my appearance. These people, when meeting me, look at my arm and immediately say, I'm sorry. From their point of view, my life must be so miserable that I deserve their pity. I have church friends and, and yes, family members who let me know that they have been praying for years that God would grow my arm. According to their view, if I only had the faith of mustard seed, then some sort of miraculous arm sprouting would occur. I've learned to take such responses in stride, knowing that their rejection of who I am says more about their insecurities than it says about me. But I struggle more when I hear such things from church leaders. She cites an example of Rowan Williams, who was Archbishop Amber at the time, talking about how that uh, able people should not respond in fright to handicapped people, but instead realize that able people need the healing of the handicapped for their own good, just as the handicapped and able people's so wholeness for theirs. She does not like that because she doesn't want to be treated as an other. I mean, she's just missing part of her own. Instead of being allowed to be ourselves, we are reduced to a category of people who must be healed before we can be accepted as equals. Few people would deny that it's hurtful to tell a woman that she must become a man or tell a black man that he must become white in order to be a full member of the body and experience wholeness. But some people still assume that people who are differently able need to become like someone else in order to be whole. Our faith celebrates the idea of the Word becoming flesh and dwelling among us, yet we re reject physical bodies that seem different. It's one thing to say that our condition as human beings is broken. It's another to assert that some people are more broken simply because they have only one arm or use a wheelchair or have different mental processes. We are all the broken body of Christ, struggling to be in communion with God and one another. God created me to be tall, to be a woman, to have brown hair, and my left arm to dance at the elbow. I don't need to be healed of any of that in order to be a member of the body of Christ. I, I got to see uh, Dwight uh, this last week uh, over in Jackson, and uh, I said, I'm, I'm going to use this Sunday, and I read it to him. And he said, people think that God only had one path. so powerful just thinking about people who have ADHD that's who they are or people who are on the autism spectrum that's who they are or people who are bipolar or blind people of color people who have cerebral palsy people suffer from Down syndrome epilepsy freckles gender identity hair loss Hearing impairment can go on with the alphabet. And all of these people often get treated like they are not whole because of something that they are that was how God made them. There are a few trillion possibilities of how our genetic makeup can hook up and create a person, and we're not all the same. And as Dwight said, People think that God only had one pattern. There is a pattern. If you're a straight white male, you can get ahead. That's right. Well, one direction, white, absence of color, male, hard to reproduce. This was males. I think I've seen in my lifetime a revolution of how we look at people. We've had acts to make more places accessible so that persons who are in a wheelchair or use crutches to walk can actually access most of our world in this country. 
I've seen an attitude change about people who are different in some way. Rather than treating them as other, we treat them as brothers and sisters. There is a rainbow of colors and a genetic code that produces people that are all different from one another. And that's God's choice. It would be so great if not only could we sit in the chair of Thanksgiving and be thankful for what we have. First of all, a chair to sit in. And, and then think about thankful for the people in our lives that are different than us. And how not only may they enlighten our lives, but also teach us something. We have, uh, Kathy and I go to a church in Oklahoma, that's where home is now. It's a, it's a small disciple church. Um, we have a lady in our congregation named Louise who has a business of doing uh, upholstery uh, for boats and cars and so or something. Uh, Louise is about my age. And uh, Louise, uh, like uh, this woman, well, here has uh, an arm that, that stops right here. She calls it her little arm. And uh, when she was growing up, her mom said, you know, you can do anything anybody else can. And Louise never felt sorry for herself, I don't think of any. And uh, she spends her life in a room in her house uh, making money, upholstering boats, and sometimes what stuff she's working with is pretty pretty big. You know, you wouldn't first think that. But Louise doesn't have a handicap. She's just Louise. My church handed out these wristbands. Uh, you are a curious bunch. Since I've been here, two people have asked me, what does that mean? Um, it's, uh, it's a couple of chalices and it says doxology. Uh, and the doxology is what we sing in the first service. You know, in churches where we sing the doxology. We stand up, praise God from whom all blessings flow, praise God all people here below. And just a reminder to, to give God thanks. And I see that several times a day. And it, it's been a good thing for me to, to remember what I have been given by God and, and I'm grateful for that. I need to remember to tell God that. So maybe maybe in your house there's a chair that you might say that could be the Thanksgiving chair. And sometimes when you sit down in that chair you think about this is Choices. I have the ability to relate to other people. I have much in my life. And Thanksgiving Sunday at South Street is, uh, sorry, that's my last church at King's Highway. Uh, you know, decorated, cornucopia. so generous with himself. <coughs> he made choices in his life. He did not have to do what he did. But he made the choice to serve God, to follow God's leading in his life, and to give of himself, remarkably taking a loaf of bread and breaking it and said, my body broken for you those who follow. A cup shared representing the spirit that was in him. A gift to those who would receive it. 
So as we eat of this bread and dip into the cup that we would receive the contents of it, may we be reminded that Jesus is present in abundance with us. May we share again.